Hey kids, History Channel guy here. So the Underground Railroad, we've all heard about it, how white and black abolitionists and former slaves would risk their lives to help escape slaves follow the North Star to freedom. There are some really inspiring stories in the Underground Railroad, and some stories you might have never heard of, like how sometimes they would kill babies if they made too much noise during the journey. Uh, but those are stories for another day. Instead, I want to talk about the Underground Railroad that led to Mexico. In today's quick history episode, I talk about the Southern Underground Railroad, the path to freedom never discussed in mainstream history classes. As one can tell by the title, the Underground Railroad also ran to the South. But, History Channel guy, how can the Underground Railroad run to the South? Those are just more slave states. Well, untrue unknowing viewer, yes, if you're a slave in, let's say, South Carolina, there would just be more slave states under you. But, if you were a slave in Texas or other southwestern slave states or territories, this would probably be your best bet to freedom. And that best bet to freedom would be Mexico. Starting in the 1820s, Mexico started to deeply restrict the institution of slavery. And the practice was finally abolished in 1829. Yep, freedom-loving patriots, Mexico emancipated their slaves over 30 years before the United States did. Well, at least we have a better economy, better schools, better infrastructure, better anything. Okay, sorry, sorry, I won't rip on Mexico. Anyway, so we have heard stories of slaves escaping to the north or to Canada, which have become so popular in mainstream culture, while stories of slaves going to Mexico have just been lost to history. Why is that? Well, it all comes down to historical bias. Almost all of the stories citing emancipated slaves going to the South were written in Spanish, meaning most American historians ignore them due to the language barrier. Moreover, because these were secret routes, if they were discovered, this would mean lynchings and death for those involved. So, as a result, there's just very few written records on the routes to Mexico. It kind of sucks too, considering there's some awesome stories from the Mexican Underground Railroad. For instance, most of the slaves in Texas knew Mexico as simply the, quote, republic without slavery. To them, Mexico seemed like a pipe dream that just a border away, there was this free paradise. What also made Mexico an extremely viable option was the lack of a Fugitive Slave Act. For instance, in 1850, the United States passed the Fugitive Slave Act, which required northerners in free states to turn over escaped slaves. However, Mexico did not sign any such treaty. Therefore, slaves who escaped to Mexico were truly free. Despite this, many angry slave owners would hire slave catchers who would illegally step into Mexican territory to recapture the escaped slaves. This not only happened in Mexico, but in Canada as well, and it really angered local government officials. Though famous Underground Railroad members such as Harriet Tubman had no part in the Mexican Underground Railroad, the unsung heroes were mostly Mexican Spaniards and German immigrants who detested the practice of slavery and worked to free the slaves from their plantation owners in Texas. In fact, some abolitionists actually moved to the South to help petition the Mexican government to build colonies for the escaped slaves. Though these plans fell through, this shows how viable of an option Mexico was for many abolitionists and escaped slaves. One amazing story involves one slave escaping across the Rio Grande River on a bale of cotton. According to sources, before jumping on the bale, the slave said, quote, I don't even know if cotton floats, but he attempted to anyway, and he escaped on the very commodity that he was enslaved for. Poetic justice. Another story involves a slave named Tom, who was actually enslaved by Texas Governor Sam Houston, who was also the president of the Texas Republic. Texas is very weird. They're a country and they were a state, blah, 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 whatever. Once Tom escaped Houston's grasp, he joined the Mexican military, which was the very military Houston went to war with during the Texas Revolution. What's crazy is the fact that historians even think that more slaves have escaped to Mexico than the North. But frankly, I'm not in that camp and most mainstream historians are not because they're frankly just speculating. A closer estimate has that number of escaped slaves to Mexico around 4,000 while the numbers to Canada and the United States North are around between 30,000 and 200,000. We were awful at records back then. Jeez Louise. 
Either way, the Mexican Underground Railroad is amazing and it should be taught in American classrooms today. Heck, why doesn't the African American History Museum in DC have at least one plaque commemorating it or telling us about it? I just remember that all we hear about is the Underground Railroad to the north, but we never learn about the one to the south. Anyway, that's all I have for today, guys. What do you think? Is the Mexican Underground Railroad something that we should learn about? Or is just this just an obscure topic that I just decided to make a video on? Anyway, let me know what topics you want to learn about in the future. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.